All right, let's talk about Christine. Now, this is a movie that I, when I think back about Carpenter's heyday, like once he started like with Assault on Precinct, Teen, Precinct 13, and he like went through and he just made hit after hit after hit, like Halloween, The Fog, Escape from New York, just The Thing. I mean, he just couldn't miss. And Christine was one of those movies that when I look back on that, along with Prince of Darkness, which I'm also looking forward to revisiting here, that I've always considered to be mild lulls. Not because they're bad, but because they're just kind of good. Like I was like, yeah, I like that one. But it's not the thing. It's not Halloween. It's not the fog. It's not, you know. But, and this is why I love doing this channel. And that's why I love doing these revisits after it's been a while. Because Christine is one that I just usually skip over because I always remember to be fine. I really, really enjoyed this on this viewing. Like a lot. Do I think it's his best work or anything like that? No. I mean, but I, it's better than I remember it. I really enjoyed this movie this time. I have read the book. Um, I don't know if I've seen the film since I read the book. And it's been a while since I read the book, so I, I can't remember every single thing. I just remember... Um, this will be spoilers for the book and for the movie because this whole thing is going to be spoilers for the movies. Um, that the one big difference, the one big change, um, besides like them driving the car through the house, which I think would have been cool, but probably would have just cost a lot of money, um, was having, you know, Roland LeBay in the car. Now, I just think that would have been a subplot that would have been either A, too goofy looking, um, or B, uh, too hard to explain. Like, and I think it would have taken the audience out of it. And without the book and all the explanation, I think people would have been like, wait, is it Arnie's car? Or wait, like whose allegiance is it to? And whatever. So I understand the reason of taking it out, but I really enjoyed that in the book. And um, if they ever remake this for some reason, I would love to see that. The ghost LeBay in the car driving it around. I just I love that with the shitters thing and all that. That was great stuff. And it, visually in my head when I was reading the book, I loved that stuff. And, and, I, and it just was the one thing that really stuck out for me when I, when I was thinking back about the films. Like, well, this doesn't happen in the film. And that really is missing for me reading the book. Um, but anyway, let's move on. John Carpenter and Stephen King, like the marriage that you always wanted to happen, like the horror book writing titan and the horror directing titan making a film together. And man, as I said, on this viewing more than ever, I was like, wow, this is a really great effort on Carpenter's part, bringing his book to life. Um, and <laughs> the kid who plays Artie, he is uh, Jason Mellon from Back to School with uh, Rodney Dangerfield. I love that fucking movie so much. And seeing him in this, it's, it's always Jason Mellon to me. But, uh, you know, his performance as Arnie here, while at times is a tad over the top and, and, and he sells the evil guy a little too hard and it does get a, t yeah, a tad goofy, really enjoy it. I think he did a really good job. As I said, I feel like it's just a tad over the top at times, but if you kind of accept those peaks, those like little spikes that he gives, the rest of it I think is excellent. Um, I really like the casting of Arnie in this a lot. And and going back and rewatching, I, I I really appreciate it. Uh, Buddy Repperton is fucking terrifying. He reminds me of a buffed out John... Uh, <laughs> Travolta. That's how I always thought. Like a 30-year-old Travolta, by the way. This is this dude looks old as fuck to be in high school. That guy looks like a th fucking... He looks 30 years old. And uh, anytime I watch this, I'm like, damn, dude, that's a high school kid? I would not want to tango with that guy. That guy looks terrifying. Um, and another kid in this movie, uh, Moochie, is from another film that I really enjoy from my childhood called Heaven Help Us. So that's another character that I can't help 
but notice and be like, oh shit, that guy too. And then his other buddy is, you know, Reptile Sherbicle from uh, just one of the guys, and he's also in Friday the 13th Part 2. And then the other, his other buddy, his other, the other bully is the goofball who keeps getting shocked in Ghostbusters. And then the guy who sells him the car, you know, is old man Marley from, from Home Alone. So lots of people popping up in here that you're like, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit. And then Brain is in this movie as well as the detective from Escape from New York. It's always cool to see the transfers and the crossovers, especially when it's like back to back and you're like, oh, he picked him up from Escape from New York and he brought him on to his next film. I'm, I'm looking forward to watching the next movie and being like, I wonder who he brought from Christine over here because I don't remember every single person that's in any of these movies. So re-watching them is like, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. Um, I love that the shitter line is retained here from the book because it's such a big part of the book, but they don't really put a lot of emphasis on it and I wish that would have been explored a little bit more. Like I wish that his friend would have asked like why are you why are you using that word like LeBay uses that word like you picked that up from him and I guess that's what we're just supposed to believe that Ari picked that up from him but he's you know emulating Roland uh throughout so no, I love that line I love that line in the book it's used a ton um this movie also proves that tough love does not work with parenting like his mother that ain't how you parent, okay? You can't tell your kid what to do like that. He's just going to want it more. I love I love how obsessed Arnie is with his car. I mean, he is just absolutely, he's love at first sight. Like, I love that the relationship between Arnie and Christine in this film, from beginning to end, is like a romance movie. Like, when he sees her, it's love at first sight. And no one is going to tell him he can't be with this chick. Like, he is going to be with her. And when Christine reveals that she's alive and that she can rebuild her, rebuild herself, that scene when Christine's rebuilding herself, which is fantastic, by the way. Wow, what incredible work that the uh, special effects crew have with that. But that scene plays off, if you really pay attention to it, with the music and everything. They, It's like a striptease. That's how it plays off. So I was, I, I remember going back and rewatching this and just being like, you know, wow, this, this really is playing out like a romance. Like he is in love with this car. And it's funny because in this movie we have um, his love interest outside of that, which is, you know, Lee Cabot. And while I do not think she's the prettiest girl in the movie, Kelly Preston is, and I don't know why the hell no one's paying attention to that chick in this movie because she's fucking gorgeous. What are these kids thinking? Like, this dude's not even paying attention to her. He's just trying to ask out Lee. I'm not saying Lee is, you know, ugly or by any means or anything like that. She's beautiful. But come on. You're just going to completely ignore Kelly Preston? Come on, get the fuck out of here. Um, <laughs> but Lee... It actually kind of annoys me too because her reaction to Arnie's car to me is annoying as fuck. Like the way she reacts, like she's demanding like, you like your car more than you like me and this and that. And, and it's like, you guys have been dating for like a day. Like you need to back it down, psycho. Like her reaction to Arnie's car and whatnot, she's like, I don't want to be around it. I'm not getting in that thing anymore. And it's like, what the fuck? Like, this is this guy's car. Like, let's calm down. You act like you've been together for years and he just got this. Uh, my favorite character in this movie is Darnell. And Darnell made me laugh out loud like 15 times rewatching this movie. There's so many funny parts. Like, when he's trying to be really, like, his version of nice to Arnie. Like, if you sweep up around here and, you know, this, maybe I'll throw in a couple bucks. And it's like his heartfelt moment. Like, that's him trying his best to be sweet. And he's like, I'll think about it. He's like, well, don't fucking think too long. <laughs> like, I love that guy. I love everything about that guy in this movie. He made me laugh out loud so, so much. Um, and I really like the, the when Lee's choking in the car. Like, the car like, lights up super bright like it's possessed. I mean, it is possessed. We don't really ever know in the movie what the car is. Like, 
it just comes off the assembly line and is just a killer car. Like that's never explored in this film. Like what is can what is making this car alive? What it, like that is unexplored altogether. And that's fine. And we don't need it explored. Like any explanation would have just felt stupid. So I'm glad that it isn't. Um, but it, it, it isn't here. Uh, but yeah, I mean, Artie has to to further along with this whole romance thing. Like Artie has to promise Christine that like. You know, Lee means nothing to him for the car to start and to like forgive him and come back to him. And, and it's all about her and him and Christine throughout this film. And as I said, I just love that this film plays off like a romance, a dark, dark romance. Man, they fucked that car up. Betty Repperton and his buddies, Jesus Christ, that thing is destroyed when they get done with it. Um, and when Arnie far, finds it, it's like you're basically seeing like if he found the body of his, or like at least the 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 battered uh remnants of his of his lover like maybe she's still alive but she's like in the hospital all beat up like that's the way he reacts and he's just like don't fucking touch me like he loses it now any guy who has his car beat the fuck is going to react terribly but you can tell arnie is taking it way more personal than that like this is his girlfriend this is his wife this is his loved one like he wants them dead i want all the shitters dead <laughs> um the one scene that arnie actually does come off as scary is when he goes for his dad's throat and he like slaps him on the face and he laughs and he goes upstairs that that scene i mean he was geeky as he is and as over the top as he is in this film that is the one scene he actually looks scary and like he plays that off really well and i think it's a lot of the acting from the dad too like reacting to the the sun grabbing he's just like fuck, he's so shocked and scared and he doesn't even know how to react and i think the dad wouldn't get enough credit on that performance there but he really does because he's just kind of an aloof father like he's he doesn't know when to come in he tries to step in and say something here and there he's just like this passive aggressive doesn't you know doesn't have the balls in the family obviously his his wife keeps him in his per and keeps his balls in her purse like she controls the house and he's just kind of sidelined and when he does try to get more aggressive and, and take dominance, like Arnie shuts that shit down and takes it back from him instantly. And he just is like, you know, it's like he reverts back into the state he's been in for a while with his wife. He, he's, he's the dominated. Um, and the, I like when the, the windows are all blacked out, like you can't see inside and that, you know, throughout the film up until the very end, you, it makes you wonder, is Christine doing this or is Arnie doing this? Like we know that Christine is able to rebuild itself, but is Arnie behind that wheel? Is he part of this or is he not? And we don't really know. I mean, I think that when it goes out and it kills all the guys, I don't think Arnie is in there. But then when at the end, I think, you know, we obviously know that Arnie is, but it's up for debate. I, I don't know. But I like that it does keep that. It's like a, ch it's like the child's play thing. Is it, is it Andy doing it or is it the doll? Another thing that I feel like they should have played out longer in that movie, like when the doll comes to life in, you know, Miss Barkley's hands. That should have been the moment when we knew that it was the doll over the kid. But they ruined that earlier by showing Chucky's hand uh, turning on the gas stove. But anyway, we're, that's not for right now. But I did like that they give you that like. Is it him? Is it not? Um, and I have no proof of this, but I am telling you straight up that Moochie was the one that shit on the dash. <laughs> um, and uh, I love the payback on Buddy. That whole scene of him chasing Buddy Repperton down and coming through and he coming out of it on flames and running him over and the body flowing and like all that whole fucking scene is fantastic. It's like the best scene in the whole movie for me. I love that shit so much and like at the end when the car gets ripped open and it comes back and it looks like it has teeth that's a really cool scene too really really well thought out there uh just such a great great revisit i'm so glad i watched it uh i'm looking forward to the next one i hope that i find uh new love and, and appreciation in some of these films that i didn't love so much before so i'm gonna get to those guys all right guys 